It, it, when you say there wasn't a vote, well, there wasn't ultimately a vote, was there, in the way no. that it was intended? It was nodded happen. through. So the, it, it is the worst of all words, mm. in, wor uh, worlds in my view. Common said it's worse. And we shouldn't forget, I like Lindsay Hall, I've known him a long time. He was a Labour MP. He's technically still a Labour MP. And was he doing a favour for the Labour Party? Because there was going to be a huge revolt for Keir Starmer on this SNP motion. Which is quite an, an allegation, really, isn't it? You're not the only one saying that this morning, though. Let's ask Labour MP for Birmingham, Selly Oak, uh, Steve McCabe. Good morning, Steve. Um, do you agree with Andrew's assessment of the situation that Lindsay Hoyle acted effectively in a rather unprofessional manner by being partisan in this very um, febrile atmosphere there in the House of Commons? I'm afraid I don't, Andrew. Uh, I don't think that's what happens at all. I think... It largely misrepresenting the situation. Look, it's not entirely new. The the existing arrangements were set up by Norman St. John Stevens back in uh, Margaret Thatcher's government because there was a dispute about the way opposition debates were handled. So uh, Speaker Hoyle departed from recent precedent, but it's not in itself uh, that knew. The problem was that he was given to believe, as I understand it, the problem was he was given to believe that the government truly intended to put and vote on its amendment. Had that happened, there would have been three votes. Um, at the last minute, you saw it yourself, the leader of the House of Commons announced that the government had changed its mind. And we can only speculate on why that happened. Steve, it was grubby. It was the Commons at its worst. There wasn't a vote in the end. It went through on the nod. It was meant to be a Scottish National Party opposition day. They didn't get their uh, motion put to the vote. What sort of grubby little deal did the leader of the opposition, Sir Keir Starmer, do behind the Speaker's chair with the Speaker? Because that's what it looks like. It reeks. Yeah, well, I'd certainly agree the scenes were very unedifying. I totally share that. Um, I, I mean, I think actually the truth is there's been far too much posturing around the whole Gaza issue, too much potting, too much posturing, too many people trying to grab headlines and not thinking about the real situation on the ground. And I don't think it, the House of Commons did itself any favours yesterday. But I'm not aware of any deals that were done. And I think it's wrong of people to suggest that. This is an exceedingly difficult situation. There was a good argument for saying that three quite different sets of views should be allowed to be put forward. And that's what the Speaker, as I understand it, sought to do. Oh, Steve, come on. There are Labour MPs who've been threatened by those who understandably feel very strongly about Palestine. I understand the sense of uh, passion behind this issue, but they've been threatened with violence from Islamist uh, constituents of theirs. And this is the way in which our democracy has now bent to this sort of religious sectarianism in this country. That's what happened last night. Well, there are MPs, not just Labour. I mean, I, I, I seem to recall that the... Uh the SNP uh, member, Chris Law, was shouted down when he attempted to address a, a rally in Dundee and we saw the horrendous scenes outside Tobias Elwood's uh, home uh, just the other week. It, it's certainly true there are elements in this country who have used the Gaza situation to display their contempt for democracy. No mm -hmm. argument about that whatsoever. Uh, the point I'm trying to make is that there were three slightly different positions uh, that were of significance yesterday. I think, in good faith, uh, Lindsay Hoyle attempted to reflect that, which is kind of what the Speaker is required to do, in my understanding. Look, I have been to Lindsay Hoyle to try and make representations on things. My experience of dealing with the man is that he politely listens to you and he makes it clear that he makes the judgment. That's, that's what we elected him to do. Steve, Steve, isn't the truth here? Isn't the truth here? The leader of the opposition is panicking because so many 
independent Muslim candidates are being put up in key Labour seats uh, because they do not like the Labour Party's position on the war in Gaza, because Starmer had refused to use the word ceasefire. Even your own front bencher, Wes Streeting, has got an independent Muslim standing him against him in a constituency where he's only got a majority of 5,000. Another U-turn, and then they mug the Speaker to make sure the vote goes their way. Well, I don't, as I say, Andrew, accept that that's the situation at all. Look, the situation in Gaza is really difficult. It requires people to show a bit of grit and a bit of understanding. And with the greatest respect, it doesn't matter how many motions are passed in the House of Commons or how many people chant in the streets or what threats certain individuals make. This will only be resolved at the point that we can make the talks in Egypt, in Qatar, at the UN, bear fruit. And, you know, we should concentrate our energies on that. People who, who think that their posturing in the House of Commons is going to make a difference are mistaken. Steve, thank you. We've finished on a very common sense note there. Labour MP for Birmingham, Steli Oak. Steve uh, McCabe there. Just to say, the number of MPs have now signed a motion of no comments and the Speaker has risen to 49. Now, this is getting quite serious in my view.